will be the last of the dangerous dates with Calendar Man. So that I can uh, get that trophy out of the way. And I'll also try to do some of the uh, uh, side quests. Restoration or clear up, clean up, whatever you want to call it. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't often watch other YouTubers on uh, here. I, I used to watch a couple of them every once in a while, but none of them ever really live stream. They always do like regular videos. So, I, I mean, I'm kind of new to the whole thing, I guess. I've been doing it for a, a little over a year, or not a little under a year. I mean. I only just started, like, uh, February, sometime February, March. Because uh, in December last year, I bought the Elgato, and I had a mini laptop, that, uh, like a netbook that I would gotten for Christmas that year. And so I was going to try to stream with it, but then it turns out that my, my uh, netbook didn't have the memory requirement like everything else was fine except for the memory so i look up to see if there's any way to extend the memory and unfortunately with that netbook that particular netbook you can't expand the memory because they tried to do everything through uh the google onedrive thing so obviously google onedrive doesn't have any sort of memory expansion for a computer It's the friggin' cat. Not really. But, uh... So, like, I did try to record a few videos early on with it, and it just... It, 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 it didn't work. Crap. Not what I was hoping could have happened. Ooh, nope. 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 Um... So then, uh, in January, I ended up filing my tax returns. And, uh, after getting them back, we got a pretty decent amount, and I used that to build a computer. It was about $400 that met, met all the requirements for using the Elgato, and that was when I started. As soon as all the parts came in and I built the computer, that's when I started. Then, after, like, a month and a half, maybe two months, I ended up... Uh, the the first power supply ended up going down. I filled out the warranty, and it went down immediately afterwards. And since I figure they're not probably going to keep letting me uh, get warranty replacements if I keep reporting the same accident happening over and over again, I decided instead to uh, uh, go ahead and just buy another one. And then, after about a month, it went out, and I just didn't know what was going on, and I ended up using some that we had lying around from old computers that used to work in the house, and it, one of them worked for a little while, but not long at all before it died out again, and I also had some issues with getting Windows to work, but eventually my window issue was fixed entirely, so... Uh, I decided to buy a GFTI my friend told me about that should regulate the flow of electricity so if it any anything harmful would try to come through it um, it would shut off automatically so we're hope I'm hoping that once I get the GFCI installed uh, that the electricity issue won't be a problem and if it blows even with the GFCI in place, then I have no idea what I need to do. Somebody told me about some sort of special type of power supply unit, but they're kind of expensive, so without having really made any income off of YouTube just yet, I didn't really have the resource to put towards it. I am trying to get a, a, a regular job to do in the meantime since this hasn't produced any money just yet. Another problem I have though is that I have to physically go and choose the option to monetize videos. I don't know why it doesn't do an automatic monetization thing. 
So I wait every two or three streams and then go onto my YouTube account with my netbook. So that I can, uh, just monetize them all at once. And I've had a couple of copyright claims. Only two of them have ever been legit. All the rest of them were like stupid claims. So I've streamed Kingdom Hearts, obviously, as can be seen on my channel. And uh, they clear. They obviously have a copyright claim on the uh, simple and clean. It's a Utada Hikaru song, and her label owns the rights to it. So that's perfectly fine. But then it turns out that some like small-time rappers who are signed on to like random labels that try to probably do exactly this like claiming money on YouTube they'll take a song from a video game play it in the background while they like small time rap which mostly sounds just like talking it's not even really rap it's just kind of like that aesthetic music where they have some calm song in the background while they like tell stories of their life you know garbage music in my opinion um but then uh they'll they'll claim a copyright on it and try to say that because this sounds similar to something that they sang in the background that they they could potentially claim money from this and every single time i get one of those i file uh, a dispute against it because i'm like this music comes from Square Enix, Nobu Uematsu. If they don't hold a copyright claim on background music, then I don't really think it's fair that somebody else should be able to get money for their work, you know? It belongs to them. And here you are trying to say that just because it's in the background of your song, you should get money off of other people's YouTube videos. And so far, each time I've disputed one of those, the copyright company has actually let the dispute go so I'm thinking that they know what they're doing and they're probably doing it just so that they can claim monetization off somebody else's account or off, off somebody else's videos so any any small time person who's making like a little bit of money off of YouTube say like a college student who streams something every once in a while doesn't really pay too much attention to his account just to make a couple of bucks here and there so say he gets like 60 bucks you know and every once in a while and that's all he really wants to do with it is, is make this small time money off of it he's gonna start losing some of that money because the ads that they put on his videos are gonna start generating revenue for this other person simply because they spoke over some music you know made me mad I'm hoping that maybe YouTube will pay more, a little bit more attention to that sort of thing because it was clearly evident that I didn't add any music to the video itself and the song that was in dispute starts off with him talking it doesn't even like it, it, it doesn't even uh, start off with the music from Kingdom Hearts he starts talking, and then it slowly fades the music in, and barely. So you can't you can't even really tell it's there. That's how sneaky and underhanded I think they were doing. Doing the whole thing. It's like, they didn't even want people to really think the music was there. So as soon as I found out, it was called, like, Dark Fang Moon Style or some crap. I look over there, listen to the song for, like, two seconds... And I'm already like, hell no. There's no no freaking way they're going to try to claim money on my videos for stealing Dearly Beloved from Kingdom Hearts. Okay. Who let Catwoman in here? 
crap. Oh, I didn't know she could disarm. Did you ban him? Okay, I got like just a few more. Well, I know one of them is up, up, up in the air over there. What's she doing here? Excuse me, that is what she's doing here. Yeah. The last one I probably missed is probably back over by the courthouse up on one of the rooftops like this and this one up here I moved the couch to make room for the tree okay so this guy's over here yeah, I'm not seeing any other blurs of red that direction <laughs> I think that was a lost reference. Like I just said, I forget, did they ever explain what the island was? I hadn't watched all of Lost myself. We started it uh, when I was in college. We got through like the first season. Maybe, I think actually, I think we were in like the second season, almost maybe the third. But it just started to get boring. And so we stopped watching it. And I hear all the time that it gets better after a certain point because all the crazy wild conspiracies start coming together, but I, I just couldn't do it. An old friend of mine used to watch it all the time and he would tell me about it sometimes. And some of it did sound interesting, but some of it just sounded boring. It's all about conspiracies. Crap, 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 crap. Nope, 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 nope. I'm out. Peace. Okay. So, from where I was over there, I didn't see any more, so they have to be over here somewhere. That's the last thing I have to do with Catwoman besides the uh, challenge mission things. Which don't really matter that much. I mean, they do matter because that's how I get all the trophies. That's how I'll reach 100%, but I probably won't do it today. I'll probably do like a um, uh, platinum video. There we go. There's one of them. So I can do like uh, Arkham Asylum cleanup first, and then Arkham City cleanup second, and then uh, Arkham Knight cleanup would probably require. I mean, I, I'm already almost there on Arkham Knight. There's only a few things I'm missing. One of them is uh, the trophy for doing all of his combo moves in one, or all of his moves in one long combo. And I saw a uh, a little guide to it <clears throat> that I figured I was gonna follow on another New Game Plus. Where you uh, do a fight with one of the, the one of the, the final boss fights you do in the game, the person that you fight in the boss fight can't die until you do a certain like takedown. There's a a thing at the end of the the little map area that you have to knock them back to. And once you get to it, you can do a special takedown thing to automatically finish the fight. Thief Vision. Got 
Might be over there where the political prisoners are. I don't know where it stops being Two Faces Man and starts becoming uh, Joker's Man. But that's all that's left in the city. This half of the section is Joker's Man, and that half of the section is. Two faces, man. Penguin doesn't have any men in here anymore. Okay, so there's a chance that the person I'm looking for could either be in the courthouse or in the museum. Uh, after her last uh, uh, her last Catwoman mission thing. It changed the museum's small collection of enemies to crap. It's, it changed the small collection of uh, enemies from in the museum from penguins to two faces. I don't think you can do the date with Calendar Man as Catwoman. Crap. Well, it says in Arkham City. But at the same time, all that time I was spending in, uh, Thief Vision, I don't know what was going on, but, like, everything started to get way blurrier. Maybe because I was just not standing still. I mean, it, at the top, it looks kind of blurrier. to consider all the areas where enemies are in like the little alleyways and stuff. Back alleys, side alleys. Subway even, I think the subway is filled with two faces men also. Oh, there he is. This should be the last guy. But this is a hard place to fight for Catwoman. Yeah, that's all of them. Family Jewels.
And if I hadn't gotten it before now, I would have just gotten the 50 times. So now we go over to this Catwoman switch point. Character switch point, but there's only one character you can switch to. Now what's a girl to do? I could quit this crazy town, but where's the fun in that? And there's no reason to play as Catwoman anymore. Unless you just prefer it. I, but you can't do any of the side quests or anything with Catwoman. There's still work to do here in Arkham City. Political prisoners and a deadly date with Calendar Man. Yeah, the political prisoners are the last. Let's fly around a little bit and listen for people to scream. Yeah. Help me. No one's like, no. They just kind of happen, honestly. Like if you hear a, a small scream, even a little bit, like if you start passing the area, sometimes uh, the little indicator will pop up. Like over there. Those two people are close enough together that it kind of lets you know it's a political prisoner. Damn smokes. I thought I told you to go get me some. What happened? I couldn't find any. Ooh. Son. Get that shit out of here. Thank not you. in my Gotham. Oh, well, not in my Arkham, I guess, because... I mean, it's not very big to consider a whole city. 84%, so that's probably like one or two more. So as I'm just flying around, I'll look again for two bodies really close to each other. Two blue dots right next to each other. Because I know a couple of places where political pr prisoners would stay. And they're not set, like, they are set locations, but there's not, like, you don't have to solve one in every location. They just kind of happen. I ain't nowhere. You didn't find nothing. That's a dead body. Somebody who died of electroshock. That could be a political prisoner. So let's go do this last deadly date with Calendar Man since today is Christmas. Thirty days have November. April, June, and September. Thirty days has November, April, June, and September. All the rest of them are of twenty-eight. All the rest are thirty. Ebenezer Scrooge was a saint compared to old Judge Harkness. Remember him, Batman? Gotham's hanging judge. They called him. Even though the state had ruled me insane, Harkness swore he'd send me to the gallows. So you see, it was all a simple act of self-preservation. I could hardly be held responsible for strangling that street corner Santa Claus for his suit. I needed the disguise to sneak into the judge's Christmas Eve party. Harkness thought it was all in fun, until Saint Nick caught him around the neck with a string of Christmas lights. I'm raising my arms him up. Later, hanging from the elaborate light display of his own roof. <laughs> Judgey almost looked like a cartoon himself alongside the comical reindeer, elves, and snowmen. I'm going to use this for Halloween. My Christmas I'm going to use, special. I'm going to use that for Halloween. <laughs> okay. So that's the last one. I already got the trophy for it. But. When you leave, I 
and come back. And just to see that the calendar is marked off. Is completely marked off and he's gone. None of you have a better idea. I say we hide out here while the rest of them run round in circles over the joker's untimely passing. I take it by your silence that you don't. Good. So we ended up killing one of Two Faces thugs who came down here and got himself out. It would be kind of cool if you got the opportunity to stop them again, like if you got some sort of extra side quest that never showed up in the, the list to go stop Calendar Man, but no, he didn't do that. Yo-ho! Now I just fly around in Detective Vision and look for two or... One or two more political prisoners. Batman, he's here. Like they can appear here, and oh, there's two of them over there. Here and uh, well, the only place they can't appear is amusement park. Because it's all flooded. Just <laughs> punch him. Right in the face. Thank you. I'm gonna find some place safe to hide from these animals. And uh, 90% to pro. <laughs> three more. I didn't think it would be three more. Because there's no way that one more is gonna fill 10%. It was at 84 on that field 6, so... Sometimes you need to stop, give it a second to load. Actually did. You fell ten percent. Thought he was gonna kill me. Thanks. Aggravated assault, and that should give me the one hundred percent on all side missions. All side missions complete. Well, hang on. Let me check the trophies then. Medals, 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 medals. Combat challenge. New Game Plus, Tallest Build in Arkham, Perfect Combo of All Moves, Every Challenge. Oh, you just have to complete every challenge twice. Okay, so the last thing I will do... ...is go jump off that building. Because I forgot to do it while I was over there. Wonder Tower! This is assuming that I can get over there. If I can't, then I'd have to do it on my new game plus. I can still come through here. Two. 
prisoners must surrender themselves for full psychiatric examination when requested. Failure to surrender will be met with extreme force. Oh yeah, this just eventually leads to the sewers, which leads me back around, but I think it's queer. It's a fair bit faster. Ah, oh, crap. What the? No, you didn't see anything. Shut up. Look over here. I've got him. He's over here. Yeah. Quite as manu as maneuverable as an Arkham Knight. We're dead. We're gonna die in here, and there's nothing we can do about it. Shut the hell up. We need to ah! scream it. Show yourself, chicken. Bugok. Your gun doesn't work. You're not getting past me. Au contraire. Okay, reopen the elevator. Obsess yet. Obsess it. And let me do this one. Dang it. I don't think it worked that time either. Okay, so I'm there. Slow. Activates. Medication. Yeah, I was about to say, you have to be able to come up at least this far. To the bottom of the tower, at least. Because there's still those two challenge things you can do. Like, there are a few few challenge things you can do. There's the things that you can break in the elevator in case you missed that. There's two Riddler trophies on the tower itself, and then there was that perspective puzzle and the puzzle for taking the map of Old Gotham or the challenge, the puzzle challenge. Here's a picture of old Gotham. And that can take you almost as high as the, the length of the whole tower. Arriving at the observation I can, If I could keep my glide going from there, it wouldn't really matter if I were to do it now. But it's easier to start higher up and just kind of circle the tower.
Top of the tower is completely blown up. But the outside of the tower. This right here is the highest one I can get to at this point. Well, actually, yeah, I might be able to jump from that maintenance hole up. I can tell. No, that's where it's blocked and broken, so yeah. That is the highest point I can reach. I don't think I can glide off from here. No. Okay, yeah, start my glide by jumping out the window. There we go. Gotham base jumper. So down there where the police officers are. So you got some helicopters down there. You can't really see it from there because it blurs it out. And they got the gay in the bridge. In Arkham Origins, like you have a bit of this section of the city. I think down here I think you have the bottom I think it goes from like where the Wonder City area is down past this bridge but anyway that's pretty much all I can do with Batman now so that covers absolutely everything I can do here uh, aside from starting a new game plus and uh, the challenges and stuff I completed all of the Harley Quinn's Revenge uh, trophies these be cool concept art pictures. I remember uh, sell them selling these as posters when the game was first coming out. Now you have these other ones, just of characters and concepts and stuff. It's like five or six pages worth, of, oh, four pages worth of stuff. You have the character models. Character trophies. The reason I didn't want to look at these um, until after I finished the game was because the ones for animated series Batman, 1970s Batman, like all these deals or outfit uh, character trophies were available, and so were the three for Harley Quinn's Revenge. I didn't want to spoil anything. Under the Riddler trophy, or Riddler challenges, you have the option of selecting which character you want. So you got the cool Arkham City Nightwing design there. You can have Nightwing from the animated series. You've got Robin, Robin from the animated series, and Red Robin. You got Catwoman, Catwoman from the animated series. And the long Halloween Catwoman. You got Batman, animated Batman, the Dark Knight Returns Batman, Year One Batman, Earth One Batman, Batman Beyond Batman, which just looks weird and kind of creepy. 1970s Bat suit, Batman Incorporated Bat suit, Sinestro Core Batman, which looks awesome. So you can have actually all of the characters from Batman the Animated Series. 
if you're so big of a fan of the cartoon that you just have to wear them. I usually stick with the regular Nightwing because he just looks awesome. I'll switch between Red Robin and regular Robin because I really like both. Then I never wear the Long Halloween because it looks kind of dumb in the animated suit. The animated suit looks fine for her. It's the other ones that look funny. But the regular Catwoman's the best. And then I can switch through any of these all the time. I don't really like that one because it's kind of old. You know when Batman's mouth is kind of shiny there? This one looks pretty cool. There was some cool outfits. His eyes are really far apart too. I never noticed that. I prefer Sinestro Core Batman the best because I just love the way the outfit looks. Maybe for the sake of the video I'd just stick with playing as these characters. So you got the rank and the campaign medals. Campaigns are uh, three uh, three missions in one. You just do all the missions at once. Uh, I think you still have the challenge set, so like, in Meltdown Mayhem, there's the three sets of score, and then in Blind Justice, there's the three different things you can do for score, and then in Police Brutality, over and over again, so that's all of these. Now, the requirement for Nightwing and Robin is more trophies than normal because of these two extra campaign sets, well, mission sets. The first one is the Wayne Manor campaign, which is specifically for Nightwing. The second one is the Black Mask campaign, which is specifically for Robin. So if you look over at the rank challenges, which are just the individual missions, in order to get credit and trophy for all of Nightwings, you have to make sure that you finish these two Wayne Manor missions, the Wayne Manor Armory and the Wayne Manor Main Hall. The Batcave is just an extra mission that they added to the group. And the Iceberg Lounge and Joker's Ride are infinite, so the number of enemies continuously goes on, and you have to see how long you can survive. Then uh, you have the regular Predator maps, which everybody has to do. And then you have the regular Combat maps, which everybody has to do. It's not really that difficult, especially not the, the combat challenges are, are easy as pie. Because all you have to do is beat people up. But some of these Predator missions with Nightwing is difficult as crap. Like the expert uh, end of the line. You have to be able to line your enemies up in a way that you can hit all three of... Or hit three enemies at once with the uh, Eskirma sticks. Which is hard as crap. Because you have to kind of lead them towards it. I've watched videos of people doing it in like 10 seconds. And I did the best I could to follow that to get what I did on the uh, PS3 version. But like I said, these are easy. I could do I could do one of these like right now. I'll go ahead and start with Blind Justice. Why not? So obviously you get bonus points for the multiplier, which requires you to do uh, things like throwing out batarangs and dodging and stunning and beatdowns and all that. No. I'm gonna go ahead and retry. Just because I messed up by accident. I wasn't in a good position. I have to sit in, in a lean forward position in order to focus well on what I do. You need to take down. So now with the multiplier, it's going to put me up at over 6,000. I think there's four rounds.
And that minus multiplier should put me like right under 24,000. Nope, right at 20,000. Up. I didn't get flawless free flow there. Because I dropped the combo there in the middle. But I did get the bonuses for not getting hit at all. So that's pretty much what all, all it consists of for four characters across the exact same maps all the time. They change some of the uh, the like the point requirements for some of the characters just based on the move set, the move list that they need. Some of the harder ones especially. Bond Justice, I think, is pretty much the same for everybody because it's like the lowest requirement. And then, like I said, the Black Mask and Freight Train missions are Robins. And, it, and it's always the same, like, all the time. 120 medals there, 93 medals there. 120 medals there, 93 medals there. Catwoman doesn't have any special requirements for bonus missions, so... All you have to do is the regular Predator and uh, combat maps for her. I've never, I don't think I've ever done any of her Predator missions, but I imagine they're going to be kind of hard too since she can't glide either. And gliding is very helpful, very useful. You don't, as I was showing on the Arkham Knight video I did last night between Nightwing and Batman, having to, being able to glide down behind an enemy exactly where you want to instead of hoping that you land in the right spot when he just leaps off can make all the difference and then she only has to do this eight set but eh, like I said each of these is three missions each if you mess up somewhere in the middle I think you can redo it to that point but you still have to finish all together so like for example if I was one point off of blind justice's third medal then I could redo it finish blind justices and then I don't have to worry about doing any of the bonus requirements for meltdown mayhem or police brutality just to make up for that last ranked metal I missed so I can't remember if it did or not but I think you do have to make sure that you at least get all three of the predator medals in one round I know sometimes that that's a requirement like it says I know I don't think it is a requirement actually and then same with Batman he's got these 16, or no, these 12 combat maps, these 12 predator maps, and that's it. 24 maps there, and then 24 maps spread across 16 different missions here. Well, it's, it's more than that because some of these become the extreme ones. And like, like a few of them... They're, they're all spread out weird, I don't, I don't know, without reading it and paying attention again. Custom challenges don't matter. They don't mean anything. Statistics. 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. Everything's full, everything's full, everything's full. Oh, except for that. Riddler's Revenge thing. And the Riddler's Revenge extra content. The Riddler's Revenge extra content will never be at 100% because I'm not going to bother doing any of the missions I don't have to. Harlequin's Revenge is only 44%. Oh, because I had to restart the story. It doesn't matter, though. Because the only thing that counts towards the percentage is the Riddler's Revenge overall progress and the New Game Plus progress. Total 71%. So anyway, um, 
I'm probably gonna play a little bit of the new game I got today, World of Final Fantasy, before I continue Arkham Knight. And as I stated last night when I was playing Arkham Knight, I'm going to probably do two more of those more challenging trophies for Arkham Knight. Although, uh, I'll go look since you can still hear me broadcasting here. Um, one of them requires all four characters, or not all four, but four of the characters to do for a trophy. I assume if the broadcast stream is paused, you can't really hear the PlayStation background music. Okay, so our... Okay, I just threw my controller in the floor because I hate it. 97%. 25% for the community challenge pack. Uh, there we go. So the next two is completing the Silent Night AR Challenge unharmed as Batman and Robin using only knockout smashes. So that means, since it's a predator mission, uh, I have to sneak up behind somebody in a silent takedown and then knockout smash them with both Batman and Robin, and I can't get hit. So it's kind of just like using the beatdowns, but a little bit safer, because while a knockout smash is loud, it happens in an instant, which gives me plenty of time to be able to run away. Then the next one is Eternal, for completing the Endless Night AR Challenge, taking out 50 enemies as Batman. That one would be pretty easy to do. I just have to be able to survive long enough to take out 50 enemies without getting myself killed. The next one is Chill in the Air, which is completing the Crime Alley AR Challenge, unharmed as Batman, Robin, and Nightwing. I think that probably means that it's a combat map. Um, and I would have to play it through all three characters without getting hit, which I should be able to do because... Like I said, I got really good at it before. As you saw with Nightwing, I didn't take any damage there, as long as you make sure to pay attention to that. Um, the next one is The Curtain Falls. Flawless free flow in every round of the Monarch Theater as Batman, Robin, Nightwing, and Catwoman. So what that means is that I can't drop my combo at all for every single round as Batman, Robin, Nightwing, and Catwoman. So four characters, I have to make sure I don't never drop a combo. If I drop a combo, I'm out. And the last one for this set, so that's six more, no, five more. Yeah, there were seven for this, apparently. That's weird. It's, it's hardly ever an odd number, but whatever. Um, is Requiem for a Killer, which says, Defeat an old adversary in the Iceberg Lounge, Lounge AR Challenge playing as Batman. So that means, I, it sounds like all I have to do for the Iceberg Lounge AR Challenge is complete it as Batman. So two of them would be really easy, which would be Eternal and Requiem for a Killer. No problem. Then Silent Night requires two characters unharmed, knockout smashes. Chilling the Arrow requires uh, three characters unharmed. And then Curtain Falls, four characters with Flawless Free Flow. It's not difficult, just a little time-consuming, considering I have to at least do one mission four or five times. Then the last two missions, or uh, I've mentioned this earlier also, but I apologize how many times I loop back around. Um, the two trophies that I'm missing for Arkham Knight are Blunt Trauma for performing every type of Predator takedown. I need to find a list of the Predator takedowns and mark them off as I go along so I don't keep doing the same ones over and over again. And then Brutality 101, which is performing 15 different combat moves in one free flow. So it's not too bad. It's not as bad as making sure he does every single one. But 15 moves is pretty close to every single new move he's got. And like I said, that, that final boss, somebody had a, made a flow chart of how to progress. Um, starting from the beginning of the fight to get 15 different combat moves in the one free flow. And then finishing the fight. So if I read that, study up on it, and then maybe practice it a few times while I'm on the stream, I might be able to get it right there on the stream when I get to that final boss. It might be a little boring, but it would be nice to be able to finally get the platinum for this. I've been sitting on it ever since I finished the game. And uh, the last trophy is I Am the Batman. <clears throat> the last one for Arkham, the platinum trophy for Arkham City is just platinum. It just says platinum. And of course, the ones I'm missing are uh, 
completing every challenge in Arkham City, including playing it through New Game Plus and completing everything. The perfect combo, including all of Batman's combat moves in any play mode, which I have to look it up again, which which ones they are. But I did it in one of the combat challenges. The 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 guide I'd found back when I was doing it on the PS3 told you which told me which was the best one to do it on. And just remembering what all of the moves are while you're doing it is the hardest part. Then twice nightly for completing New Game Plus. Then uh, com- uh, obtaining 36, 72, and 108 combat med- or campaign medals, and then cre- uh, completing 24, 48, and 72 uh, combat or er, rank medals. So it's rank and campaign. But other than that, I have everything else. And you don't have to collect Riddler trophies or anything like that again, but you do have to collect polit- political prisoners again when you do a new game plus. And Arkham Asylum, the Platinum Trophy is also just called the Platinum Trophy. I could have sworn it was I'm Batman also. But either way. And the only one I'm missing for that is Free Flow Perfection, which is performing a perfect combo, including all of Batman's combat moves. Which is easier in this one because there's less moves, even though you're a little clunkier. But there's also a specific combat challenge that has a good area for testing and trying out the free flow perfection without having to worry about things like guns and stun rods and stuff like that. Then there's 8 medals on combat challenges, 16 medals, 24 medals, and then 8 medals on predator challenges, 16 medals, and 24 medals. Which works a little bit differently, I believe. I think that it's like... No, no, it's the same. It's 3 medals on each map. And there's eight maps. And then uh, two specific ones for those challenges. The first one being complete one predator challenge by using only silent takedowns and without being detected. Which is a little bit harder than completing one combat challenge without taking any damage. Because you could get caught while you're trying to do a silent takedown and you're not allowed to use knockout smashes or anything like that. You have to... With the whole end. Actually, I don't think knockout smashes are in the first one, so it wouldn't really matter. But once you complete all of the uh, the combat and predator challenges, that'll put you at 100% complete, which gives you the last two trophies: perfect night for 100% complete and the platinum trophy. Um, I have all of the trophies for the Batman Telltale series. That's kind of obvious. And Batman Arkham Origins, which I might do once I get my PS2 back up and running. Um, I mean my, not PS2, my computer and PS3. Um, I have a hidden trophy on Cold Cold Heart. Can't remember what it was, but I think it was one I just accidentally overlooked. Then there's Initiation for completing 72 medals on the original Arkham Origins ranked maps as Bruce Wayne. And completing all 108 medals on the original Arkham Origins campaigns as Bruce Wayne. It was just, uh, you bought this DLC that included some new maps and stuff. And it gave you the ability to pick uh, two Bruce Wayne outfits, I believe. One is, like, his initiation when he was wearing the ninja suit and stuff. And I think another one is, like, a karate gi or something. I think, I don't don't remember. It's been a while. And then uh, the Platinum Trophy is still just called Platinum Trophy. Kind of sad that they didn't get a little bit more creative with it. The other trophies I'm missing here are Shadow Vigilante, which is for mastering the Shadow Vigilante Dark Knight track, which the Dark Knight tracks are a pain in the ass. The Gotham Protector and the Worst Nightmare. Worst Nightmare would be pretty easy because the way the the Worst Nightmare one works is it flows from Predator Challenge to Predator Challenge. So as long as you can make sure to do the takedowns it requires you to as you go along through each of the Predator maps, you should be able to get the Worst Nightmare track done, but I didn't really pay attention to it the first time I played through. Gotham Protector, it's just like a bunch of random requirements. I could have that one done already, but for some reason I just never got around to like wiping out the rest of them. I think there's a reason for that too, beyond just I chose not to do it. And then there's Shadow Vigilante, which is the hard one, because that's the one that requires you to do all these fancy combat things 
sometimes it's difficult to make sure you follow all their rank ring requirements. And the last one on the Shadow Vigilante track is for doing the combat, all of the combat moves in one combo. So that means you have to be able to find a place to do it in game as opposed to being able to do it on a challenge map in order for it to count. Then there's Legend of the Dark Knight for completing all the Dark Knight challenges. The only one of and then Personal Trainer for obtaining all the medals on the combat training maps. Perfectionist for obtaining all the medals on custom maps. I've got this for acquiring all the upgrades, which I can't do until I finish some more of those tracks. <clears throat> um, what hit me? Take down 100 enemies who didn't know you were there in the main uh, story. Which just means I have to sneak up on people and take them down. Uh, it just, I don't know why I haven't accumulated a hundred between all of the enemies I fought, but, ah, I don't know. Flawless Display is one that I apparently forgot to do for successfully battling Shiva without taking any damage. But I did get the one for completing the Deathstroke uh, battle without failing a single counter. Then one of each, use every free flow focus gadget in one combo. That's kind of like the Batman one for all the combos, but it's only the focus gadgets, which... There's a ton of. There's double tapping L2, which is the battering thing, or single tapping it. Double tapping R2, which I can't remember what that one is. Holding down L2 and square, which is the uh, the uh, explosive gel. And in one combo, you have to be able to do this. The free flow focus one is whenever your focus meter is up and you use a gadget, it will be strong enough to take a character down. So you have to be able to fight, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. You have to be able to knock enough enemies out to be able to activate six specials. But the thing is, one of the upgrades that you can get allows you to, to use two specials with one focus. So in the very least, you'd be able to do L2 then R2, and then L2 square and uh, L2 triangle, and then L2 circle and L2 X. So, three instances, but you still have to be able to fight enough enemies to be able to get through all of that and make sure that you don't get hit or accidentally drop your combo the entire time you're doing it. Which is way more of a pain in the ass than anything else. Then Medalist for obtaining all the medals on the original ranked maps in challenge mode as Batman and obtaining all medals on the original campaign maps in challenge mode as Batman. And it specifies as Batman because when you pre-ordered it, you could play as Deathstroke. And there's no trophies for Deathstroke at all. Then completing New Game Plus. I'm surprised I didn't do that. I thought I did it already do that. And then finish I Am the Night Mode, which is a third version of New Game Plus that requires you to <coughs> fight an even more difficult challenge. I just I, I didn't feel the need to play Arkham Origins that many times through because it's bad. It's not completely bad, but it's pretty awful. And then all the rest of the trophies underneath that are multiplayer trophies. And I had a bunch of people that were helping me play online get the online trophies. The last one I got was uh, win a round of each map in each faction. No, that's not it. It was more recent than that. What the heck? Oh, there it is. Uh, for reaching max overall level in multiplayer and reaching the max level with the Bane and Joker factions, which I got on November 6th of 2016. When I first restarted playing this, back in November, I was playing online with a bunch of people of 2015. It was after I got back Arkham Knight, but I, I did replay through it when I was playing Arkham Asylum. I mean, when I was in, in wait for Arkham Knight. I w would like to be able to have 100% platinum on all of the Batman games just because it feel good. I want to do the same with Borderlands and me and another friend are working on that right now. I want to do the same with Final Fantasy games which I was in the middle of. I got 15s. Um, 14s is really easy but I have to be able to pay for the subscription and actually buckle down and start doing all of the crafting stuff. Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 13 I was in the middle of playing recently, before 15 came out, which requires at least two playthroughs, and if you mess up even a little bit, you'll require three. 
uh, I finished Final Fantasy 13 right before I started 13 Lightning Returns. I had finished 13 2 a long time ago before Lightning Returns came out because I'd never beaten it at the time. Uh, Type Zero, I was in the middle of playing and working on it also. And then uh, 10 2, I already have 10 completed. Uh, I want to see all the same with Assassin's Creed. The only one I'm missing right now is Black Flag. It's got some multiplayer stuff I haven't done yet. And the uh, Assassin's Creed Chronicles games, I have all three of them. I just have to re-download them and actually play them. They're not bad, but they're... They get kind of boring because, like, combat and hiding and stealth and stuff really isn't that interesting. Um, I'd like to see the same with all of the Bioshock games. I bought the Bioshock collection, and I'm doing pretty well on it. Uh, Bioshock is missing the challenge trophies, and because I hadn't played it in such a long time, I wanted to get a real feel for it when I started the new one, and decided to play it on normal instead of uh, hard, so I couldn't get seriously good at this, or Brass Balls. And then there's another difficulty after that called Survivor Difficulty that was added with DLC in the first one called A Man Chooses and I Chose the Impossible for completing it without using a Vita Chamber, which isn't really that hard as long as you make sure you save every time you hear an enemy approaching. In Bioshock 2, I actually got the Platinum Trophy for it on my first playthrough. And then I did the DLC Minerva's Den, but I haven't done the Protector's Trials yet because I, I don't really like doing trial missions and I don't like having to get star requirements and stuff like in Batman. Or I have to do it in Batman. Now I have to do it in Bioshock also. It's awful. And then uh, Bioshock Infinite. I completed most of it on my first playthrough. Uh, I was missing killing a hundred enemies with the Founder, Huntsman, Carbine, or Vox Burst Gun. Uh, killed 30 enemies with the, while riding a Skyline. Killed 10 enemies utilizing vi environmental hazards. Killing 20 enemies by knocking them off of Columbia. Five enemies while they're falling. Five enemies while you're drunk. Uh, killed a handyman by shooting only his heart. I was going to start another game on easy and go to that spot where you fight a... What, like the first time you fight a handyman, save the game right there. Make sure all of my bullet strength is at the max so it doesn't take so long. And then do the best to shoot him only in the heart. If I lose, reloading the game. And if it works, then continuing it. And I had started doing the Clash of the Clouds thing, but those get really hard. Unlocking all gallery items. Getting a kill with each weapon in Vigor. Uh, completing all the Blue Ribbon challenges. That's the one that's going to be the hardest. And then, uh, Borderlands, I was talking about Borderlands, I, we just completed Borderlands 2, and we bought the Borderlands triple pack for the PS3, and I have Tales from the Borderlands, and I've only completed episode 1, we're in the middle of the DLC, we just started the DLC with Borderlands 1, and then Borderlands the pre-sequel we we're going to start after we finish 1, we had already started 2 because we had it first, before we bought the triple pack. And then the Uncharted games, I have the Uncharted Collection and Uncharted 4. I want to see all the trophies for those. Um, where was I? Uh, Uncharted 4. Uh, I have to buy the DLC for Uncharted 4 too. The survival. Looks like there's 10 stages. Earn one or more stars on all survival stages. Get on the crushing setting. And earn three stars on all survival stages on the crushing setting. Oh, there's supposed to be the new Uncharted 4 DLC starring Chloe that comes out sometime in January. I think I'll have to get that too, probably. And then uh, Uncharted 4 just requires the same thing all the other Uncharted games required, but I already completed most of that. Uh, the only thing I needed to do in one was finishing the game on Brutal. Completing a continuous speedrun as Donut Drake and achieve a completed speedrun time of less than 2 hours and 30 minutes. Two, I ended up needing to play on uh, 
No, what was twos? Killing four enemies with one explosion. Apparently, I'm as a dynamite. Killing five riot shield enemies by running over their shield. I couldn't find five at the time I was doing it. But I know a spot where I can reload it and do it over again. And then beating each... Uh, these, they had these three chapters. Seven in less than nine minutes, 30 seconds. Sixteen in less than 12 minutes. And twenty in less than 15 minutes. Oh, no, that's three, not two. And then brutal. Last chapter without dying on normal difficulty or harder. Continuous speedrun as Donut Drake. And speedrun time of less than four hours and 15 minutes. And then two... Two is the one I have to beat on Crushing. I don't know why I chose not to do it on Crushing the first time I played it through. Because I did it with one, and I did it with three. And then I'll just be missing a Brutal, Continuous Speedrun as Donut Drake, and a Speedrun time of less than three hours and 30 minutes. So I'm not too far from completing all those either. Ratchet & Clank was another series I want to see all the trophies of. And I have all of them... For every Ratchet and Clank game except for Full Frontal Assault and All for One, which are the bad ones. But I'm going to do it anyway. And uh, a few other things I feel a completionist need to, to 100% are uh, the Sly Cooper series. I did that. Um, and then Jack and Daxter. I wanted to do that. I got rid of my Jack and Daxter collection recently in order to get some money for Final Fantasy XV. But I do plan on picking it back up once I start getting some money in. Um, I have the Mass Effect Trilogy. I want to complete all those because I actually had all the achievements for 1 and 2 on the, the 360. But then I decided to replay them on the PS3. The only thing I would uh, am worried about is uh, doing the multiplayer stuff in order to get 100% on the main story. People say it's not required, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, let's see. Those might actually be all of the series. There was the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games. I got all of those. Trophies 100% as a series. Um, series, oh, Fallout 3. The Fallout, the newer Fallout series. 3, New Vegas, and 4. I have them all for 4. And I had Fallout 3 in New Vegas, but those are also games that I sold for Final Fantasy 15. But they're only like 20 bucks or less for all of the content that already comes on disc, so getting them back wouldn't be bad. The Senra and Kagura series, too. I have to get Estival versus the first Vita one again to finish it. And then I've got uh, the, rhythm ver the rhythm game on the Vita downloaded, and the second... One on PS4. And there's the PS3 Arkham City. The only thing I was missing on it were Catwoman, Robin, and Nightwing things. The original Arkham Asylum I already have 100% on. Mm -hmm. Actually, that looks like it's all the series. Oh, and Kingdom Hearts. I do have all of them for Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 on the PS3. And unless they update it so that the trophies carry over from the PS3 to the PS4 version, I'll have to do them all over again on the PS4 once that comes out in March. And then 2.8 comes out on the 24th of January. And I'll have to go and get all of those as well. I just won't feel complete without it. 100%. Devil May Cry and Zone of the Enders, I probably wouldn't worry about those because some of them can be really hard. I'm just, I, I just can't get the knack for doing some of the combos without dropping them. But well, it's not really dropping them, but you can get hit pretty easily without paying enough attention. Oh, and I, I think they shut down the servers for Uncharted two and three on or one, two, and three on the PS3, but. Besides that, like I didn't want to pay for all the DLC on the PS3 version. I have three percent of trophies on Drake's Deception because I never, I never played it until I bought the the trilogy right before four came out. But I did finish Uncharted one and two, but I didn't get a lot of trophies for them. Hmm. I'd like to get all the trophies for 
uh, Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, and The Last Remnant. Well, not Last Remnant, that's something else. The Last Guardian. But I have to be able to buy The Last Guardian and rebuy the Eco and Shadow of the Colossus collection. I was working on Shadow of the Colossus first. I did start Eco, but I'm not sure if I finished it when I had started it. Into the Nexus. Oh, God of War was one I was going to try. Because I had the God of War Legacy Collection. But, like Devil May Cry, some of the making sure you get combos and dodges and stuff, I, I think that it was just a little too time consuming. I have 81% of the God of War trophies for the first one, 68% for the second one, 64% for the third one, 51% for Chains of Olympus. I don't see the other uh, PSP one. The leg, the uh, God of War Saga came with one and two on one disc, three on another, and then two DLC codes, or not DLC, download codes for Chains of Olympus and the other one. I've not played Ascension, and if I do the full completionist route, I'd have to get God of War 3 on the PS4 also. Just depends on how I'm feeling once I start getting money and complete everything. Oh, Infamous. That was one I wanted to get all this, the trophies for. I have it uh, all of it for 1, 2, uh, Festival of Blood, which was like a, an in-between DLC uh, standalone title. A downloadable standalone title. And then uh, Second Sun, I have all the trophies for it, but not for First Light, the uh, standalone DLC for uh, Second Son. Uh, let's see. I wouldn't mind getting all of them for Far Cry 3 and 4. I was close to 3, but the multiplayer was so annoying. It was hard, but like it shouldn't have been as hard as it was, I don't think. It was just glitchy, too. I guess I could say Resident Evil, but I'd only be getting it for... Four, five, and six. Oh, well, no, there's the remake of one, and they're supposedly make, remaking two. So we can do those two. Four and five I have downloaded, um, and I'd have to rebuy six. And one was free for PlayStation Plus, so I'd be able to do that one. Uh, just a couple of JRPG series I wouldn't mind doing. Shadow of the Colossus, I'm at 48%. Ghost of Sparta, there it is. I don't think I finished it, because I only have 1% trophies. Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Dexter. Uncharted was one of the very first games I ever played, actually. When I first got my PS3, I got Uncharted, the Sly Cooper collection, and the Jack and Dexter collection. And then... <clears throat> uh, actually, I got the second Ratchet and Clank future game and then I went and bought the Ratchet and Clank collection to replay before I got into the new ones and of course I had to buy the first future game also and when I finished it I found out that um what was it called I think it was like Quest for Booty or something like that was a standalone downloaded thing, so I had to get it too. I don't think it had any trophies though, because a lot of uh, early PS3 games didn't have trophies, and only a few of those early games were updated with trophies when they implemented the trophy system. That was probably a very boring 20 minutes of me. <laughs> talking about trophies and stuff but uh, anyway like I said I'm gonna go play World of Final Fantasy a little bit and then maybe come back and play Arkham Knight